Hello, these videos are being created to accompany Math 139, College Algebra, at Jackson College. We'll begin with our preview chapter in Section 1, talking about representations of linear functions. A linear function is actually any function that can be written in this form, f of x equals mx plus b, or if you don't want to use function notation, you could simply call it y equals mx plus b. This notation is actually called the slope-intercept form of the equation. Algebraically, these equations can be manipulated so they look a little bit different, but they can always be simplified to that form. One giveaway that an equation might be in linear equation is the fact that the power of x, the highest power of x in the function, is 1. That's one of the defining features of a linear function. The graph below shows us an example of a linear function that's been plotted in, onto a graph in Cartesian coordinate system. And we can start to see the um, comparison between the equation, y equals mx plus b, and the graph of the line. The value of m defines the slope of the line. Slope is simply how steep it is in sort of everyday language. So our m refers to the steepness of this line. The value b refers to the y-intercept, or the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. So in this picture, our b value would be this y value right here. We'll talk quite a bit more about finding values, numerical values, for m and b a little bit later on. For now, let's take a look at the six examples at the bottom of the page. And right now, all we want to do is decide which of these represent linear functions. The most obvious one is probably the very first. We have y equals 5x minus 9. And we can see that this is already in exactly the form that we need. 5 would represent our m, and the negative 9 would represent our b. And so there's our y equals mx plus b right now. The second equation we're going to have to eliminate because we do see a power of 2, and we know that in a linear equation we can never have a power larger than 1. In the third example, we're back to a power of 1 on the x, so it seems like a pretty good candidate for a linear equation. If you're kind of wondering where the pieces went, we could rewrite this one. 7x divided by 6 could also be written as 7 sixths x. Now we're kind of missing the plus b, but if I put that in as a plus 0, which we normally wouldn't write, but we could just for now, it makes it really obvious that we have a slope m, 7 sixths, and our y-intercept, whoops, if b is 0. So this one is a linear function. What about the one over here in the second column? Once again, um, this one might be a linear function that might be slightly hidden, kind of similar to the last one. The problem is that one of the values is 0. There are no x's, so I could write this as 0x plus 5 at which point it becomes quite obvious that I do have an m, a slope of 0, and a b, or y-intercept of 5, and therefore it does fit the format for a linear function. In the next one, we're going to have to eliminate this one because of the square root. There are no square roots in our slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And the last one, we will eliminate that one as well because of the fraction. Make a quick comparison between the fractions in these last, um, last examples in each column. In this one, we decided it was linear because the denominator was just a number, a constant. And we could write that as 7 sixths times x. The problem with this one is the denominator contains the variable x, and therefore we can't write it in that mx plus b form. So we're going to get rid of that one, too. Let's 
talk a little bit more about slope. If we actually want to put a numerical value to slope, we normally use our slope formula. If we start by knowing two points on the line, which I'm referring to here as x1, y1, and x2, y2, I can then use the slope formula. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In this first unit, if there are two formulas that I would say you should come away knowing by heart, they are the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and then this one right here, the calculation formula for slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If we imagine for a moment how that would look on a graph, if I have two points on my graph, and I can arbitrarily choose which one to call x1, y1, I'm going to pick this one right here, and then we'll call the other one x2, y2. I can then plug those values in, and I can subtract the y values for the numerator, and for the denominator, I simply subtract the x values. Let's go ahead and try that out in this next example. I'm given my two points, and again, I'm going to refer to this first one as the x1, y1 and the second one is the x2, y2. And plugging those values into my slope formula, I'm going to get 2 subtract negative 1 divided by negative 5 subtract 4. That's going to give me 3 over negative 9, or in lowest terms, a slope of negative 1 third. Again, the choice of x1, y1 versus x2, y2 is arbitrary. It wouldn't have mattered if I had reversed those. What's important is the consistency. Make sure that the subscripts 1 are both in the same point and the subscripts 2 are both in the same point. Let's think a little bit more about the geometry of what we've done here. If I look back at my original graph with the two points labeled, I could imagine traveling from the first point to the second. Instead of at an angle, I could go first horizontally and then vertically, or first vertically and then horizontally, which is actually, I think, the way I want to do it. I could say, First, I could go up vertically a ways until I'm level with that point, and then I could move over horizontally until I reach my point. We often like to think of this as the rise, how far up we've gone, and then the run, how far over we've gone. The rise is really the difference in the y values. How far did I have to go to get from y1 to y2? That's the y2 minus y1, which we'll refer to then as the rise. The run, the horizontal distance, refers to how far did I have to go to get from x1 to x2. That's the difference in the x values in my denominator. And again, we're going to refer to that as the run. And so very often, we geometrically refer to our slope formula simply as rise over run. It's a fast way to get the slope if you have a picture, and you can simply count how far you've gone up or down and how far you've gone left or right. Typically, of course, up would be positive, down would be negative, right would be positive, and left would be negative. So let's take a look at the next example here, the graph and see if we can calculate our slope using the geometric concept of rise over run. To do this, I want to be careful to pick my points really carefully. I want to pick points that go exactly through nice integer values of x and y. So for example, I probably would not want to pick this point because it has a fractional x value. This one here is a much better choice. It seems to go exactly through the point 1, 3. 
And then similarly, I want to come on back down. And let's see, this point here looks like a good one. Um, X is 2, Y is 0, nice integer values. Let's use that one next. If I'm going to think of my slope as rise over run, I'm going to start by thinking about the rise. How far up or down did I have to go? I'm going to choose to start with this point and say that in the vertical direction, I would actually have to go down one, two, three units. So a negative three would be my rise. For the denominator, my run, I now have to travel just one unit in the horizontal direction to the right, so that would be a positive one. And then I get my slope, negative three divided by one, or negative three. Just to check the consistency of this with our original formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, let's do that calculation as well. We also know slope can be calculated using that slope formula. And if I think of my points here as 1, 3, and then this one is 2, 0, I can subtract the y values, 3 minus 0, and then subtract the x values, 1 minus 2, to get 3 divided by negative 1, or a slope of negative 3 again. So, of course, we should, and we do, get the same value whether we use the rise over run geometrically or the algebraic formula for the slope. We will continue and finish the section in the next video.